Well, that did not go as planned. I was all set to be Mr. Cool YouTube guy with my B-roll that was going to lead right into a really interesting location for my extensive and exhaustive set of tests of the AF on near and AF on far feature in the new firmware uh, 2.6 for the GH5. But after two days of trying to shoot at an overcrowded park, being chased by a bee, and then shutting my finger in the car door, I decided to come back here and shoot a set of tests here in our uh, beautiful parking lot at the condominium complex. And after shooting an entire battery of tests out here in the parking lot, I realized that I had never turned on the microphone. So let's just head back inside and I'll share my findings with you there and some examples of the AF on near and AF on far and my thoughts on the performance. While I was working on the autofocus performance test for last week's video, I did try out that new AF on near and AF on far feature that was added to the menu, but I couldn't find any difference in the performance, so I didn't include any of those clips in last week's video, and I didn't even really mention it in the video. But I did get a couple of questions about it, and I kept thinking about it. Why is it not working, and what is it good for? How does it work, or does it work at all? So I thought more about it, and I started to think, well, maybe... I'm a little too obsessed with one area mode and face eye detection mode. And also, maybe I'm too obsessed with autofocus continuous to really figure out what this is for. So, uh, I also was thinking maybe it has something to do with how much distance there is within this small space, and that was something mentioned in one of the comments as well. So I decided to go outside and try it some uh, in a larger area. And even there, I couldn't really find any difference with the AF on near and AF on far when applied to uh, face eye detection or one area nothing I could really uh, repeatedly verify. So it got me thinking, maybe it has something to do with AFS mode, autofocus single, and maybe it's something that could be applied more to stills than to video. So I set up two guitars as focal points about eight feet apart, and with the GH5 pointed at them in such a way that I could choose the 225 area mode and just pick an area that would include both of those guitars within the focus area and see if when I chose AF on near and AF on far, would it perform any differently? And sure enough, it did. With the camera locked down on the tripod and just picking between AF on near and AF on far, I would see that while I had it on AF on near, it would pretty consistently lock on to the closer subject within that focus, chosen focus area. And I also noticed that it worked better to do this with the back button focus. So pressing the back button definitely made it lock on consistently to the near object when I was on AF on near, and it made it consistently lock on to the far object for AF on far. Now this isn't particularly useful if you're just locked down like this, because you could always just pick whichever subject you want uh, with a single point type of autofocus. But when we start moving the camera, we can see if I pan across the scene that with that AF on near area uh, chosen with 225 area, it, as it passes through, it will pretty consistently pick the closest object that it can find within that area. And if I switch to AF on far, I get the opposite result and it picks the background more consistently. And if I use the regular AF on setting, it tends to pick more randomly between the foreground and background with maybe a slight preference to the, to the nearest object. So with AF on far selected, I took some photos through this chain link fence and you can see that it picks objects that are further away within my focus area, which was sort of in the middle of the frame. So with the exact same focal area with 225 area engaged, I used the AF on near and notice that it catches the fence. So I'm in approximately as close as I could get the same position uh, as I took the previous photos, but with AF on near, it's picking the fence instead. So this illustrates that AF on far will help the camera look past that closer object to see the subject in the background or further away. Now this feature worked pretty much the same for video as it did for stills when I shot through the same fence. 
Now it's easy to imagine how AF on near might help you if you're shooting a subject that's unpredictably moving like an animal or a sporting event or maybe a musical performance and the subject is moving around in a way that you can't really quite predict so maybe you have a little bit larger area to focus with and help the camera to decide to shoot what's closer to you and limit its tendency to look for things in the background. Now just to demonstrate how this is working or not working, I'm using it for this entire part of this video. I've got AF on near, I'm using 225 area, and for that I've got the largest area of the sensor chosen that it would let me have, which is almost the entire uh, span of the sensor. And it's supposed to be choosing me because I'm the closest thing in this uh, frame. And if I were to hold up something uh, for it to catch focus on, it should move and then come right back to me. And it's not super fast, and I've got it set for the default speed and sensitivity, so I haven't amped up any of that or, or slowed it down. This is just kind of the, the general settings. So I'll hold this up again. Now notice that it does do it, but if I don't cover what it's locked on, so right now it's pretty much locked on my face, and if I come up and don't do uh, anything to cover my face, it doesn't really grab it. But if I move that in and interfere with what it's locked onto, then it moves. So it's not really totally moving unless it's got a reason to think that it's not in focus. So uh, that's something to remember about it. Now if I move out of the frame all the way, it should go to the background. And if I come back in, it should come back to me. Let's go up closer again. So as you can see, it's it's working pretty well. So it's choosing whatever is the closest thing in the frame. It's not, again, not very fast, but it does work. So this actually might be a good solution for someone shooting a talking head type video like this, especially if they're holding up products and letting you see them up close and then coming back to their face talking and things like that. So just something to consider for that. Now, I, I really feel like this has a lot of potential advantages for photos and in the AFS selection on the little dial. So uh, that's something to consider if you're using your GH5 for photos is how this might help you out in those situations like I described earlier. So anyway, those are my thoughts on AF on near, AF on far. I think it's actually kind of a cool feature that was added. It just took me a while to get to it and figure it out because the Panasonic description on the firmware update was extraordinarily vague and it just did not lead me to think of how I might use it because I tend to be stuck in thinking about the autofocus for the GH5 in the way that I normally use it. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed checking this out and I hope that AF on near and AF on far uh, adds some functionality to your, to your GH5. And if you like this video, click like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.